Welcome, hatchlings, to the crow's nest, where we talk about whatever's on my mind. I'm Ava, like Avian, and these are my co-stars, Onyx and Marie. Now, I know I said we were going to talk about Swifties in the next episode, but I was given the opportunity to talk about the death penalty and the argument on whether or not it's inhumane. People think it's inhumane to rid the world of those who deserve it the most. Yes, Onyx. Many people argue against the death penalty, with many claiming things such as its racial and financial biases, burden on taxpayers, and again, believing it's inhumane. Nowadays, the primary ways of execution are electric chair, firing squad, and lethal injection. But back in the day, I can see how humane it was con- considering the Salem witch trials. I've heard so much about the witch trials, not just in America, but in my homeland of Paris. I wasn't alive for it, obviously, but they too burned women who were accused of being witches. Okay, we're getting a little off track, but the witch trials were a good example of biases against anyone who wasn't a white man on death row. In this case, rather than women who know how to read, it's people of different races, usually black. Executing people for being Negroes. Onyx! Executing people for being of darker complexions. That's the most manic thing I've heard in my life. Well, not necessarily because of their skin color exactly, but there is evidence to show that over 35% of people who were executed in the last 30 years were black. It's disappointing because black people will only make up 13% of the general American population, and you can clearly see the dehumanizing pattern. In a book I read this year, A Lesson Before Dying by Ernest J. Gaines, the main supporting character, Jefferson, is persecuted after being framed for killing three people in a store. The defense attorney doesn't even try to defend him, dehumanizing him and referring to him as a hog. This shows very well how unfair death penalty is towards black people. I didn't think your feeble mind could handle that kind of book, Ava. Marie, I told you we don't call people mentally feeble or feeble-minded in 2020. Well, I'm just saying that someone of your state of mind wouldn't willingly read a book like that. <sighs> Anyways... There is actually a real case that involves these type of stuff. In March 1944, George Stinney was accused of killing Mary Thame and Betty Bickner. There was no evidence of his guilt, and the trial was only two hours and had an all-white jury. Because of these things, a racist time period, an all-white court, two white girls and one black boy, it was pretty clear that they assumed George was a criminal because of their mindsets, and he was wrongfully executed on June 16, 1944. How could people be so dullardlessly stuck in their ways that when they see a young boy and think, "Mm mm-hmm, that's a criminal, honestly, just monstrous of them. Well, considering this was 1944, a time when people would literally go to lynchings as a date. What? Yep. I think we should get into our next subject, the financial problems of execution. How can executing someone bring financial problems? Well, y'all are from a period of time when you could just hang someone in the street and call it a day, and that didn't cost anything. But nowadays, it's pretty expensive to charge up the electric hair, or load a gun with one bullet, or get polyvone, the chemical used for lethal injections. So, where do we get the money to do it? That's right, your taxes! Because why use them to fund the schools or hospitals? Why use them to give welfare to people who need it or donate to the homeless? That's not as important as giving someone the old shocky shock Eva. You're getting off topic. Sorry, but in January 2021, it was revealed that a federal execution can cost up to $37,449. And don't even get me started on Texas, where the death penalty cost them $2.3 million? All that money could be going to help Palestinians, but you're just going to give it away to do something irreversible. Ava. Long-term imprisonment is way cheaper than capital punishment, and it's not as effective as long-term imprisonment. And it doesn't help that 95% of people on death row are part of the underprivileged backgrounds, which ties into financial biases. There's also evidence that shows that the justice system chooses to punish those who don't have many resources, likely because they can bribe their way out of trouble. Let them eat quick. Am I right, Marie? Okay, I think it's time for us to get into some honorable mentions. It doesn't make crime go down. States that love capital punishment don't have lower violence than states that don't have capital punishment. It's mainly coming from human psychology when people commit crimes like expressive crimes, which basically is mental health, alcohol, drugs, and rage being why the idea of execution wouldn't wouldn't bother someone, which is also what slides into to how it harms people with disabilities. Marie, 
Don't look down on me for stating how the mentally intellectually stunted or me developmentally disabled people are more likely to falsely confess to crimes and receive harsh punishment and treatment while incarcerated. There's no way that one could so blindly admit to something that they didn't do. Well, that's the thing, Onyx. They're disabled mentally, so they may not often understand the gravity of what they're claiming, and oftentimes are gaslit and coerced into admitting to these crimes. Take Joe Artie, for example, who was infamously known as the happiest man on death row. How can one be happy on death row? I'm getting to it. Joe was a mentally disabled man who was wrongfully executed in 1939 after the authorities used his IQ of 36 to their advantage and made him confess to killing Dorothy Drain in August 1936. Joe's family were Syrian immigrants, which could also add a racial bias to why he was persecuted. It was clear that Joe didn't understand that he was set to die, playing with trains and requesting ice cream for his last meal. He would later gift one of these trains to another prisoner before he was put to death via the gas chamber in January 6th, being named a happy- Onyx, are you good? <laughs> yes, can we just move on? He is done, and it's like such a lovely boy. Okay. I think I should mention how these cases can put people off from the death penalty due to the irreversibility even after being found that they weren't guilty of the crime. James Lybin from Columbia Law School shared a study showing that every execution from 1973 to 1955 in 90% of states that gave out capital punishment had errors of 52% or higher and 85% of states had an error of 60% or higher. And 1 in 25 death penalty receivers are wrongfully convicted. If we can't trust the laws and even machines to tell us who's guilty or not, then we can't just go around executing people left and right. The American Civil Unities Union even argues against the death penalty, saying it violates the right against cruel and unusual punishments, as well as groups like the Journey of Hope, Equal Justice Initiative, and Witness Innocence fighting to end the death penalty. Okay, I think we get it now. The death penalty should be banned. It's cruel, discriminatory, and inhumane. Yes, I see. The execution should be banned. Well, that's not all we're talking about. We can't forget that there are two sides to every argument, and now we're getting to the side of the people who are for the death penalty. Oh, so we're switching sides now? No, Onyx. We're just going to discuss the other side of why people think it's necessary. And let's get to the obvious, why people are for capital punishment. Some people just need to die. He said it! He said it! Well, what people could you be talking about that need to die? Child molesters, school shooters, rapists, I could go on. Oh. There are plenty of instances when the death penalty is absolutely warranted. Let me give a few examples. John Wayne Gacy, better known for his clown sona, Pogo the Clown, was executed after being convicted for raping and killing 33 boys and men. Taylor Parker, after lying to her boyfriend and saying she was pregnant, was put on death row for killing her pregnant friend and cutting her baby out of her wound to pass it off as her own. Oh my. Benjamin Cole, who was executed after essentially tearing his baby in half by forcibly pushing her heels onto her head, tearing her spine in half, and causing her to internally bleed to Okay, death. okay, we get it! This all goes to show that sometimes the death penalty is necessary. Another example I can give is Ian Brady, but unfortunately he didn't get put to death. He and his girlfriend, Mira Hindley, were notoriously known as the Moors murderers after they raped, tortured, and killed five children before burying them on the Moors. He was given life in prison, but why? Isn't it obvious? It's because he did all of those things to innocent children. No, I mean, why keep him alive? Why feed and give a place to sleep to a child murderer? Why waste resources on someone who did possibly the lowest thing a human could do? I guess you have a point there, Ava. Exactly. That's why many people argue that the death penalty is actually necessary, especially in these cases. In fact, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, even wanted to pass a bill to make child predators have to be on death row. I've heard of this DeSantis. He's no good. I'm familiar with all the other anti-gay people bills he wants to pass, so that's why I was pretty happy to see he wanted to pass this one. But then people mentioned that he would probably include gay and trans people just existing in the same vicinity as children, and then the little bit of respect I had for him fizzled out like a candle. Another reason people may believe that this penalty is good is because of religion. The Bible says an eye for an eye, basically a taste of your own medicine, in the sense of if you kill someone, then you should be killed. Well, very much so. Those who take lives do not deserve their lives. Well, taking the life of someone who took another won't bring that person back. 
Well, Marie, well, that's a good counter-argument. I'd also say it could bring closure to the family of the victims of the crime. But as you said, sometimes that's not the best option, as some argue that the death penalty won't bring closure and doesn't really solve the crime, as shown in the disappearance of Willie Bigham, where they removed parts of his body over the course of several months before they realized it's not helping them mentally, the, the family, or the justice system. Oh, so now we're getting back into why it's not okay? No, I'm saying that in some cases, capital punishment is actually relieving, but in others, it can slowly become torturous. So then, Ava, whose side are you on? Well, it depends. Do I seem like the type who would want the Jenner to live just in jail? Exactly. Well, at least this episode didn't end in WWB like last time. Don't bring that up again. However, anyways, the death penalty is a pretty debatable topic across the divided states, and this segment has shown that whichever side you're on, it's fine, because in the end, waiting for the day we're all put in the ground is pretty much death row itself. So hopefully, we'll catch you later, because I've got a lot of other stuff I want to talk about soon.